Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. We're going to be starting a new series here discussing the principles of computer science. And so our first lesson here is going to be dealing with data. And we're going to start by just a simple exercise here where we're going to be counting some dots. So I've got some cards here, and I've got a link to these cards down in the description. You can cut these out if you want to. Um, notice that these cards here, we've got one star, two star, four stars, eight stars, and 16 stars. And the question is, which cards would I need if I wanted to come up with the value 21? So I can look at this and I can go, okay, well, I know that 21 has a 16 in it. And 16 plus something should give me 21. I know 16 plus 5 gives me 21. So I'm not going to need these 8s because 16 plus 8 would give me 24 and that's too big. But I know that 16 plus 4 would give me a total of 20. And I'm almost at 21. I know I'm not going to need this 2 and this gives me a 1. So I know that if I had a 16 card and a 4 card and a 1 card, that would add up to 21. The question is, are there any other ways that I could take these cards and add up to 21? Let's say something that doesn't use the 16 card. So if I try not to use the 16 card, let me try not to use it and see what happens. So I've got an 8 card here. So this is 8, and I know 8 definitely goes into 21. I could do 8 plus something. And 4 is my next biggest number. If I try and do 8 plus 4, that's going to give me 12. Then 12 plus 2 gives me 14, and 14 plus 1 gives me 15, and there's no other cards for me to add up here. I can only use each of these cards once, and that's really the idea here, is that can I make this number using each of these cards only once? So this is a problem here, because I couldn't get away with leaving out this 16 card. This 16 card is quite essential. So I need to make sure that I include this 16 card. So the question is, can I get away with leaving out any of these other cards? I know that if I wanted to make 21 out of this, I, if I try not to use this 8, because this would add up to 24, that's just way too much. And I used the 4 earlier. That was part of my original solution. So let me try not using the 4 here and see what happens. So I've got 16 plus, well, I've got a 2 here, and I've got a 1 here. That's only going to get me 19, which is not going to be enough. So I'm beginning to suspect that there's only one way of adding up these cards so that they add up to 21. So let's see. I know I need the 16. I know I can't use this 8. I know I'm going to need this 4. And 16 plus 4 is 20. And I can't use this 2 because that's too high. Yeah, I believe there's only one way to get a 21 out of these four cards. So... That's interesting. I'm wondering if there was a way that maybe I could add up some values to get up to uh, 13. So let me try that. Let me erase what I've got here. Probably need a bigger eraser. Let me try doing a different number here. Let me try 13. See what happens when I try and get a 13 out of this. So let's see. I know that a 16 is way too big. I know I'm not going to use a 16. I know that I'm definitely going to need that 8. And then the next number I have is 4. 8 plus 4 works. And then 8 plus 4, if I try and add the 2, that's going to get me up to 14, which is too big. But if I add a 1 here, that works out to 13. So let's see. If I try not to use the 8, I know I can't use the 16, but if I have there, that's a 4, and that's a 2, and that's a 1. That's only going to get me 7. That's not even equal to 13. So I know I definitely need to use this 8. I know I'm not going to use this 16. And, okay, well, let me try not using this 4, because I used the 4 earlier up here. So I've got 8, and then the next card I have here is a 2, and 8 plus 2 makes 10. If I had one more, that's going to give me 11. That's not 13. So I'm going to run into a problem. I definitely need this 8. I can't use the 16. I can't use, well, actually, I definitely need that 4. So let's make sure I've got the 4 up here. And 8 plus 4 is 12. Once I have these two numbers, there's no way I can use that, and that leaves a 1, which I have a 1 card for. And so what I find out is that 
no matter what number I pick, there's going to be a unique representation for that number using these cards. Well, let me try another example here. Let me try something like 26. Maybe it's just the fact that it's odd that was the problem. Let me try 26. So I'm looking at 26 and I know 16 is a number that'll work. So let me keep that 16 card here. And I've got 16 plus 8. 8 is 24, so 8 looks good. And I've got 24, so if I try and do the 4, that's going to be 28. That's, that's too big. Let's get rid of that card. And now I've got this 2. So I've got 16 and 8 is 24, and 2 more makes 26. That looks wonderful, and I really don't need this 1 card. So that's a representation there. I could say that 16 plus 8 plus 2 is going to give me my 26. As a matter of fact, I could kind of just cheat and say that, yes, I do need a 16, I do need an 8, I don't need a 4, I do need a 2, and I don't need a 1. So I need this, and I need this, and... I don't need that, and I do need this, and I don't need that. So that would add up to 26. That looks like a good summation up to 26. Um, let me try 31, because 31, I think, is going to be rather interesting, and I'll explain why in a bit. So I've got this 16. I'm definitely going to need to use up this 16, because if I don't use it, I don't think these other cards are going to add up to 31 for me. And once I've got the 16, I know 16 plus 8 would give me 24, and, oh, look, the rest of these, this 4, and this 2, and this 1, adds up to 7. That's interesting. If I take a look at 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, I notice that all of these numbers add up to 31. And that brings up an interesting point. The idea is that these are all powers of 2. And adding up powers of 2 allow me to get any number within this reach here. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could take a look at this and try and come up with any number. If I was to get uh, 1, then I know that I'm going to need no 16s, no 8s, no 4s, no 2s, and a 1. If I wanted to get a 2, then I'm going to need 0 16s, 0 8s, 0 4s, 1 2, and no 1s. If I wanted a 3, then I could say I have no 16s, no 8s, no 4s, a 2, and a 1. If I wanted a 4, that's easy because I have a 4 card. If I wanted a 5 or a 6 or a 7, I would basically use the 4 card with any of these combinations. I'm starting to think that I can achieve any number just by adding up these powers of 2. And then I mentioned how... 31 was an issue, because 31 was 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And there's no way that I could get 32, because 31 used up all the cards. And I mentioned that I was only using each of these cards once. So with this 32, if I wanted to express 32, I would really need another card here. And this card would have to have 32 stars on it. And then once I had this 32 card, then the biggest number I could get would be 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Let's see, that's 32 plus 16 is 48, and 48 plus 8 is 56, and 56 plus 4 is 60, and 60 plus 2 is 62, and 62 plus 1 is 63. So with these six cards, I could do any number up to and including 63. So if I wanted something that would go beyond 63, I know that instead, not just having a 32 card would be essential, but I would need to make sure that I had a 64 card. And of course, that would give me 64 plus 63, which is 127. And if I wanted to go beyond that, I would need to have 128 card, and so forth. All of these are powers of 2, and whenever I add up these powers of 2, I always end up one less than the next power of 2. Notice that 31 was the biggest number I could get to with 5 cards, and so 2 to the 5th 
is 32. And 63 is the most I could get with six cards. And two to the sixth is 64, which is the next card I had to get. Here I had 127, which is the most I could get with seven cards. But I know that two to the seventh is 128. And so if I want bigger numbers, all I need to do is add more of these cards. Now, when I'm using numbers like this, in other words, powers of two to do this counting, we call this binary. And then each one of these, whether it's used or not, each one of these spaces is called a binary digit because these are all powers of two. I have a one, or I have a two here, or I had a four, or I had an eight, or I had a 16, or I had a 32, or a 64. All of these are binary digits, and because we're lazy, we call these bits. So in the examples I had here, this is an example of a five-bit number. This was an example of a six-bit number. And here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I'm incorporating 8 of these cards, then I would be talking about an 8-bit number. And it's interesting here, because if I wanted an 8-bit number, I had this 127, which I could get to with 7 cards. If I add this 128, I end up with 255, which means using an 8-bit number, I can get anything between 0 and 255. Now, I know in the back of your mind, I say 8-bit, and you think of something that looks like a pixel, because you think of 8-bit video games, or 8-bit art, pixel art. And so I want to talk about what happened in video games back when this was a limitation, when we could only deal with eight bits of data at a time. And there's two very famous examples of this, one of which is the video game Pac-Man. And what happened is, in the Pac-Man video game, you could play level one or level two or level three or level four or level five. Once you got up to level 255, that level was okay to play, but when you tried to play the next level after 255, the computer went, wait a minute, hold on. I only have 8 bits. The biggest card I have is 127. I can't get any higher than 127. So 255, that's the biggest number that I can deal with. And this thing called an odometer effect happened where if it adds 1 to this, everything gets reset back to 0 because that's all the memory that we have, just eight bits. And so the computer's going, wait a minute, level zero. That makes no sense because we start the game at level one and we end up with all of this garbage here. And this garbage is unplayable. Part of the Pac-Man game was that there were a certain number of dots you had to eat, these dots that Pac-Man eats. And if you notice, there's a few dots but there certainly aren't enough to trigger another level change. And so once you got to this level, that was it. You could get trapped in some space between the maze here. The monsters would get all bunched up. And basically the game was unplayable because of this 8-bit limitation. Another famous example, for those of y'all who have ever played the Civilization series, the very first version of the game had warlike rankings and all of the leaders had warlike rankings and they ranked them from 0 to 10. Whereas if you were a very warlike civilization, like the Mongols or the Aztecs, you were going to have a very high number, like 9 or 10. And if you were a very peaceful civilization, like Gandhi with the Indians, your, your, your anger level actually was down to 0. But there was also a advantage in the game called democracy. And democracy was one of those aspects, one of these uh, types of government that you could research. And whenever you had democracy, it automatically made you a more peaceful civilization. In other words, it automatically subtracted two from your peace rating. 
Now, if you're the if you're the Mongols or if you're the Aztecs and you have a peace rating of ten, meaning you're very hostile, decreasing that gets you to an eight. So you are actually a much more peaceful people. But if I try and take two away from zero, there is no negative in those cards that we were talking about. And so the odometer effect happens again. Like when you're riding in a car and you see all the numbers tumble over, this time we're tumbling backwards, backwards to the biggest number. And we're going two back from the biggest number, which means we actually hit 254. And let me tell you that if you think the Aztecs or the Mongols are hostile at a level of 8, you should see the Indians at a level of 254, where they would threaten to, and often did, destroy you with nuclear weapons. Now, this was a bug in the original version of Civilization, but it's been cheerfully kept on in Civilizations 2 through 5, um, because... It's just so funny, the idea of a peaceful people discovering democracy and becoming extremely belligerent and hostile. So it's kind of an in-joke there. So the question is this, you know, we have very powerful computer systems. We certainly are aware of situations like these. And the question is, um, this doesn't happen anymore, right? And the answer is, no, this still happens. Uh, back in December of 2014, you may have heard of this video, Gangnam Style, by Psy, and it had a lot of views on YouTube. So many views, in fact, that that same odometer effect that we've been talking about happened to YouTube, owned by Google. This very large corporation still had this issue, still had this error. Now, we've been talking about 8 bits. In other words, using eight of those binary digits. What YouTube used was a 32-bit value to keep track of the number of views. Now, there being 7 billion people on the planet, YouTube figured that this 32-bit limit, which is 2,147,483,647, would be safe. I mean, you wouldn't expect a third of the world's population to view a YouTube video. Of course, they weren't considering the cross-cultural popularity of the song and the fact that people would listen to this hundreds of times. And so we end up with this, if I add one to this, then I end up on the negative side of 2,147,483,648. And then if I keep adding, well, this number is going to decrease by 1. And if I add another view, it's going to decrease again by 1. So you start to end up having these huge negative amounts of views. And YouTube had to change its formula so that it now deals with the next largest size, which would be a 64-bit memory location. And with this 64-bit, you're actually talking about 10 quadrillion. So you're talking about something that can be viewed over and over and over and over again, millions of times by a viewer without any issues, at least until the next cross-cultural pop hit comes. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is I wanted to talk about the essence of binary, the essence of binary digits, which we call bits, and why they're important, not only historically while they're important, but why they're important today. Now, thank you for listening. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.